Hello and welcome to the latest of the Business Spotlight interview series and I'm delighted to be joined today by David Evans from Colin Briscoe Construction Limited. Hi David, how are you? Hi, very well thanks. Good, 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 great stuff. So thanks for joining. So yeah, if we could just start with um, getting a bit of background on yourself and the business um, you know, as it is and, and how it's kind of progressed over the years. Okay, um, so yeah, my name is David Evans, I'm the uh, Operations Director for Colin Briscoe Construction. I've worked here for 20 years now, um, but I've worked alongside Colin Briscoe's for probably another five or six years on top of that in previous employments. Um, so Colin Briscoe set the company up uh, 30 years ago and we're a specialist civil engineering and construction company operating in the northwest of England. Um, a small company, um, there's only 30 people in the company, but we work in uh, quite interesting uh, a variety of uh, construction sites. Okay. And um, what, um, you saw small companies, like 30 is obviously quite a lot, but just talk about the back, so the business, what, when you talk about what kind of things do you work on, what, you know, do you, do you, do you focus on certain areas or? Is... Uh, for, for a company our size, we're quite diverse in what, in what we do. Um, we work uh, heavily with utility companies, uh, primarily Electricity Northwest. So okay. we're a, a, a contractor who builds and um, does the civil engineering side of um, construction on uh, electricity substations. Mm. Um, and we work with a, a wide range of blue chip clients from um, county councils to um, local industries. Okay, brilliant. And this, this and they, and they, the size of the jobs you're working on. I mean, what kind of infra is it? Uh, infra yeah, it, it ranges in a, a scope from anything from uh, several hundred pounds, where we do a reactive maintenance uh, mm. call out facility for some clients, but we right. work anything up to about two million pounds. Okay, sizing projects. So. Fantastic. And so, can you give me a bit more background about yourself? So, how did you get involved? So, you, were you work? You're working in another business before, and then moved over. So. What, what yeah, that? I've right. I've come through a multitude of different um, work paths since I left school. I joined the military when I left school at sixteen. Right. I spent eleven years in the army. Um, right. Came out of the army and wasn't quite sure what to do with myself. Um, and then ended up working for a national plant hire company. Um, so I started working in the office um, dealing with plant hire. Um, went on to sales and went on to management through those. Um, got to work alongside, so we were supplying Colin Briscoe's as a as one of their preferred suppliers. Um, and I got to know Colin, who then offered me a job, um, and then came into the company twenty years ago. Excellent. And how have you seen the company grow over those twenty years? How? how yeah. Um, Colin's took um, you know a steady growth process over a period of time. And mm. um, you know we look specifically at certain areas. We keep ourselves. Um, true to what we we started off doing, um, we haven't got into massive expansion, but we've we've kept uh, a client database now for nearly thirty years, working with the same clients. Um, so we aim to deliver a, a, a service um, which enables the client and hopefully gives the client satisfaction and comfort that we know what we're doing and we can mm. uh, encourage them to come back to us for repeat business. Cool. And what and what kind of things do you focus on to ensure yeah you know, to to focus on that uh, retention and and you know people coming back time again? I think it's delivery of service from uh, from the, the initial contact to mm -hmm. the completion of the work and um, how we deal with the, the client and his contacts um, has has been key to it. Um, mm. But it's not only that; it's the, the supply chain we use along the way. Uh, we try to foster a uh, good working relationship with local contractors. Um, and we try to encourage the, the same work ethic that we put forward um, through our own employees and then through our supply chain. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and clearly it's growing, you know, you've grown it over the 20 years, it clearly works. Yeah. Yeah, it's, we, Colin started off on his own. He was a one-man band. So right. we, you know, we, we've maintained grown slowly up to a, mm. a staff of 30 people um i would say the staff are very highly trained in what they do because they have a quite a broad range of um work that we undertake so mm. they say we, we work in electric substations nuclear power stations to right. ministry of defense sites 
Mm -hmm. um, so it's um, it's quite a, a wide range, a diverse yeah. range. I think you should do something look disservice to say you only, only got 30 employees. That's that's a fairly reasonable yeah, yeah, business. Yeah, I suppose who, the type of work we carry out would usually be, or could usually be undertaken by larger contractors. Mm. Um, so the type of work we carry out has never really phased Colin. Um, so, it, you know, we just carry it out on a slightly smaller scale. Mm. No, no, that no, makes sense. And I, I guess, we, do you feel... Being keeping at a certain size gives you that uh, allows you to be that a little bit more. Yeah, I think Colin's idea was that stuff. his idea in, in setting the business up, he could provide a service sometimes on a smaller scale that larger client, larger contractors didn't want to provide. Yeah. Um. Sometimes you set a big contract up, it you know it runs for six months, twelve months, two years. Mm. Um. A lot of our works can go anything from a week to two weeks, up to six months. Right. Um, you know, and sometimes the, the bigger contractors didn't really want that end of work. Uh, sure. Colin saw a, 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 a requirement for mm -hmm. an, um, a contractor with the same qualifications and the same accreditations that could carry out the work to a to a high standard, but on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where we've kind of set for the last, I'd say, 30 years. Yeah, yeah. It's a great example of yeah, knowing the market and then spotting that opportunity and, yeah. and, yeah. and building a, a business around that. The one database, one client, yeah. And we, we target you know, um, specific clients because th those are ones we believe who we can provide mm. a high quality service for. Brilliant. Great stuff. Yeah, no, yeah, that's a yeah, really good lesson to, to, for any business owner about, you know, if you focus on one thing and do that really, really well, that's yeah, can be much, yeah, say, much better than yeah. trying to be all men, you know, everything to all men and, and not doing it great, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, and he's right. maintaining that standard, maintaining that level of um work ethic that mm. um goes on from you know, you know, the initial setting up of a project to, to carrying it out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Same level across the field. Great stuff. Great stuff. And then obviously you've been there 20 years. You've got a team of 30 working in the business. Yeah. What is it about working in your business that, you know, you obviously, I'm guessing you enjoy what you do. You get a lot of satisfaction. You stayed there. What, what is it about the business and the company that, yeah. that you enjoy? Um, I, can't, I can't always said the construction industry is much like the military. Okay. Very organized. Um, yeah. you, you know, there's, there's always a good, uh, good working relationship with your staff. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I, I kind of drew a, a very uh, similar uh, feeling from it when I initially started. Right. Um, I like being busy and I like being kind of active. I like the, um, uh, some say, pressure, you know, that kind of continual um, changing of different work needed. Mm. So it's, um, it's, an, it's just an area that I enjoy working in now. It's, um, it's never still. There's always something going on. Mm. Uh, things change day by the day, so it's um, there are plenty of challenges. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. And I guess you, you mentioned the parallels. It's when you did mention the military, uh, the, the, there are so many parallels in running a business yeah. and what yeah. you know, learnings from when people have been in the military and they take them into the business. Yeah, business yeah. Well, it's um, yeah. I think it, you know. Obviously, I I think I've carried forward things that were taught to me at quite a young age. Mm. Um. And you try to apply them in a similar way, um, sure. You know, into your, your current day of life, you have to keep changing things because life changes and yeah, 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 absolutely. things change. But as long as you can remain adaptable and keep looking at things um, as a challenge, and mm -hmm. you know, look at ways to try and solve problems, I think it works really well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. Um... Since you've moved into the business world, obviously you've been there, you know, as you say, 25 years. What's what's been your biggest learning within business about you know how you've operated and, and how the business operates? It's quite a lot of areas. It's um dealing with staff mm -hmm. uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, trying to understand everybody's different, trying to work at you know, look at everybody's kind of requirements and everybody's needs. Sure. Um looking at the clients' needs as well. Um Sometimes you feel as though everything always happens at once. Mm. Um, and I think trying to separate um, separate issues when they come in so that you don't take them personally. So you, you look at them 
you know, as the raw fact, as the raw issue. Mm. Um, I think sometimes if you allow things to get on top of you, it can be make things quite hard and make your life quite difficult. I think if you can separate things, and again, that's something I think I probably learned when I was in the military. You, you just look at the raw problem, the the the, you know, the issue that's there, mm. and concentrate on that. And I think that's um, something that's useful. Yeah, I think you're absolutely... able to to focus on. Yeah, I think dealing with client issues or or even staff, it sometimes it's taking the personal feelings out. Sometimes is it to to take? Yeah, it... and I think in life, it, it never it, it doesn't come in a steady stream. No. That's, no. that's one thing I think you found it's you know you can go through a week or two weeks and everything runs smoothly mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden there are multiple issues and yeah, yeah it's just the way life is you've just got to be able to put them in an order deal with the most important things at first and, and then and get through it and then at the end of the day go home and not take those issues with you yes I think that's a, yeah absolutely it's it's yeah at the, at the end of the day yeah our industry is quite a long day you know mm -hmm. Um, which is great. I, you know, that's the kind of a challenge I enjoy. Yeah. But to separate themselves so you can have your family life as well as your your work life. I think yeah, yeah, absolutely. Important. Excellent. And then when you bring people into the business, what when you do bring you know new new yeah. groups in, what what do you look for in in those employees? What's what's important to you and the business when you look? Yeah, for I think uh, from myself, one of the things I've been. Um, lucky to get involved in. I've got involved in local schools doing um, careers fairs and mock interviews. Um, we've an industry like a lot of others that have a, a, and a requirement for more people coming into it. Mm. And there's a shortage of people within the industry. Yeah. Um, so going into schools and talking to young people about the industry has been quite interesting and rewarding. Right, okay. great. Um, at times. Um, type of work we do we do struggle trying to put apprentices onto site so right. we tend to a slightly older apprentice because of the type of work we do and the areas we work in um but that said you, you, talking to young people about coming into the industry it's trying to explain the ethos around the company how we've developed the company mm. and trying to um get over to the person that that's the way we want to move forward mm. uh, so it's it, it's an open door policy where people can ask questions people can mm -hmm. come and talk to you and trying to then develop the person to get the best out of them yeah you know to find the potential in people and put them into the right place oh cool and are you, are you uh, you know recruitment across any industry at the moment seems to be like the hot topic in terms of yeah. struggling so are you finding that you're going, you know, you're made people now being made of apprenticeships and, and things in, in in instead of maybe taking the, the university route. Is that where you're kind of aiming? At? Yeah, we, we've targeted that quite a bit, um, both for site work and for yeah. um, managerial. So we have, yeah. um, we have technical apprentices now with uh, the thing that's just about finished the fourth year at college. Oh, cool. And they're then looking towards a university degree. But again, they're working four days a week and go to college, stroke university a day a week. Um, right. and that's the same with the site based who are learning trade yeah yeah trade roles so yeah yeah brilliant uh, i think it's a, a great learning curve you can see the the development very quickly mm. because they're in a work environment sure a lot of the time so yeah 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 so they're getting a balance of both and, yeah balance of, yeah i think they're much more rounded person yeah yeah uh, they get a, a, a really good understanding of the business quickly it mm. doesn't work for everybody because some people would rather do a university degree and mm. you know go away and have that um, experience. Mm. Um, but I think for the people that we've we've brought in and worked with, that they've they've understood it, and you know I think it's delivered a, a good uh, training um, regime, a good package for them. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Great, it's great to hear that you know getting involved and, and focusing at, at, at that opportunity and getting and making yeah. people aware of the. The, the 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 big positives of getting into the you know the, the construction side of of life you know there's there's yeah. big opportunities there across the board like you say so it's it's great for for kids yeah. to hear that and and students to give and just have that choice i guess and understand what what they can do instead of just going down one kind of yeah path. absolutely i think it's uh, you know sometimes i think it's a path that people don't get explained you know, no. at an early age um 
parents and you know i was probably guilty of the same you know college university mm. get a degree you know achieve something in your life but i think actually when you stand back and look at it what you can achieve going through an apprenticeship in any trade in any industry mm. is um you know is good and yeah, yeah. At the end of the day it's down to the person then yeah who's taking the apprentices to take advantage of that yeah yeah because yeah. i think nowadays especially with the university route being so expensive and the debt levels yeah. you get into it's it's suddenly become a, a you know a conversation around well what's the best return on investment you know university is yeah. clearly a great opportunity for people that want to go to certain sectors yeah but you know there, there are be, you know there are as good opportunities outside of that route as well maybe yeah you know, i think yeah, no. even now we're kind of as a as a, an economy we're suffering from 20 years ago where everyone kind of went down the university route didn't they and suddenly the trades yeah. and the apprenticeships didn't really start to yeah yeah take over. and now we're, we've got a shortage of all those trades in the in, in the in the i think so i think the other thing as well is is when if an employer's looking for an apprentice mm. looking to fulfill a specific task so they're looking for people to go into a specific area and they'll work with a college or mm. uh, an education deliverer to to find that path that they need to be filled yeah sometimes if you're going to directly into university or to further education whichever route it is you, you you're not finding the exact path an employer is looking for so you could end up with a, a degree that fits a lot of things but doesn't quite suit yes a, a specific employer so mm. when we've had our apprentices come through we've worked with the colleges to say we need them to come out to achieve this and if that's what the individual's looking for right it's a win for both people yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, again, we've got apprentice project managers that they're doing college courses in project management rather than just construction. Right. Okay. Construction could be engineering. It could be building. Mm. It could be surveying. There's a such a wide uh, area that you, mm. it covers. You're not quite getting the exact route that you need sometimes. So mm. an apprenticeship and working with them from a you know the right point, we can then obviously try and formulate as best we can. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant! It's great to hear local, you know, local companies, you know, doing that and getting involved with the with with colleges and schools and, and yeah. making people. So yeah, yeah, great stuff, and you know, obviously continue to do that because you know can only benefit the the, yeah. the local economy as well. So that's really really good. Yeah, um, that's certainly good. Good stuff. Um, so kind of moving on to what would be, yeah, you know, based on your your background in in business, what would be your best advice? best bit of advice for someone who's you know thinking of starting up a business on their own or getting into business um nowadays I, i'd understand the business you get into yeah understand the the market mm. understand your area because it's very really difficult because it changes all the time and the platform you think you're starting on can change within a matter of months yeah sometimes through no fault of your own we've, you know, we've all just gone through a period of COVID, we've just gone through, um, you know, a dip in re recession and um, and the war in Ukraine's had an effect on mm. um, the way we operate. So I think you know, if, if people looking to start out, is understand your area, you know, mm. as much as you can, um, sure. understand your opposition, yeah, understand how they operate, yeah. um, take time to understand them. Um, I think it's something that we do, you know try to understand what our competitors are doing mm. and how they deliver the work um, oh. and it kind of helps us to understand how we need to keep evolving all the time um, yeah definitely I, I think it's accepting challenge because it, it would be a challenge mm. no yeah some great advice yeah yeah I think um, all of those are yeah absolutely relevant I think you're an example of what you just talked about you know Colin noticed that you know that gap in the market yeah the niche area to, to focus, look at. Yeah. focus fully on that so yeah no yeah. great stuff good 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 so what does the uh what does the future look like then for Colin Briscoe construction and, and David Evans as well and, and what <laughs> um, challenges moving forward yeah I, the, the the challenge for us is, is an ever-moving platform mm -hmm. um I think for ourselves um the company's developing Colin's possibly looking to go into an area of retirement and right. myself and a colleague are, are looking to shape our future um uh -huh. you know as things go on um and again they're just challenges that come up we've got to look at how we can 
best achieve them. Mm. I look forward to um, maintain our standing as we are now of the platform mm. that we've built right. um, to slowly develop it in the area that we kind of work in and we know, you know, we can deliver this work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So, yeah, so some challenges that about, you know, that having, again, I mean, taking that five-year plan and looking at kind of where do you yeah. want to be at that point, yeah, that, what does yeah. that look like and how yeah. do you work towards that? So, yeah. yeah. So, and I think things like COVID, you know, have been difficult for people. Of course. But when you look back at it as well, it, it's now enabling to, or should help companies to go, well, actually, can't just look forward in a very straight, simple term. You've got to kind of expect there are, there are possibly bigger things that can have an, an impact on your company. Yeah. And to kind of be that flexible that you can yeah. absorb something like that coming up. yeah. yeah. Nobody would have expected the 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 impact COVID had initially. No. For us as a company, we were very busy through it because of the type of work we were doing. Sure, had to really think about how we could continue to deliver the work safely mm. with the, the, you know, the the realms of what was um, changing. Yeah, um, absolutely exceptional circumstances. But like you say, you just don't know what's around the corner, and you don't know what's around the corner. And, you know, having that open mind and you know, being adaptable again yeah. I thought some of it goes back to how we kind of started out yeah you know we originally taught to be adaptable to think um sure. you keep challenging yourself yeah yeah absolutely no great no it's um, interesting times though it's great to be in a position where you're looking to grow and, and build that business and, yeah. and 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 have some vision on that which is fantastic so good good stuff up there so um so uh one of the you know one of the other things that we, we like to ask is about kind of what inspires you as a you know as, a, as an individual or within the company what kind of things or what people have inspired you in the past or inspiring you at the moment yeah what inspires me um i think people inspire me because you can read you can take a lot of inspiration from a lot of different people because they mm. the, everyone has different challenges and you read things in the news and you see what people have gone through and you think keeping it real understanding that you know life is complicated and life is hard sure and i think if you can look at other people sometimes and just take a step back yeah um sometimes things are not quite as bad as what you think they are mm. um you know and it, it's i think it's a life's a challenge mm. but enjoying the challenge yeah yeah no, yeah. absolutely mindsets are i guess mindset and things like that make a big difference in terms of yeah. how, how you yeah how you approach everything right yeah yeah so yeah i think it's just you know taking stock of what's going on in life and sure um you know working through it mm. no, perfect great stuff well some some really great words there so thanks for that and and finally any anything else you wanted to mention about the business or anywhere we can if you want to find out more about what you do where 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 to go you know online etc. yeah we, we have a website um briscoe construction um okay. kind of highlights some of the program the projects mm. that we've worked on and delivered over the past years cool. uh, there's links in there about the, uh, the work that we do outside of the company um right. so you know the work we do with with local schools um right. the work we do as a company with uh, the civil engineering association Mm -hmm. uh, which we support contractors in the north of England um, and training throughout the northwest of England. So, brilliant. Yeah, it's quite a bit in there. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. I'm sure people, you know, can go and have a look at that and, and find out more about about you know the business as well. So, yeah, yeah, great stuff. All right. Well, um, I appreciate your time, David. Thank you for no you know, um, the interview. It's been great to, to hear about you and the business. And um, yeah, look forward to speaking to you in the future. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Thank you.